idea of having a fab lab traveling around, it's incredibly cool. It's definitely true that you have to bring the fab lab to people and uh, just hoping them to come here uh, or in an existing fab lab is not working anymore or is not working enough. Sometimes a lab needs to move to the people instead of just waiting for them. It lets people discover the FabLab in places where technology is not so present. Uh, for example, we, we live in a big city, but uh, some people are in uh, rural areas where they don't have access to this kind of technology. So it's really great to be able to bring it to them and show them and, uh, and uh, share that with them uh, without having them to move or to, to go to another place. People should visit the FabLab because it's the right place where they can free their fantasy building objects and meeting people. But there is a very strong relationship between libraries and fab labs. Of course, we, there are a lot of people saying that you know, fab labs are new libraries. The important thing uh, of fab labs is that they really are a place for the local community, as, as libraries also used to be as well. So probably there is a more important role for the future for the library as well. Maybe with the difference between just being passive consumers of media or content or just being active producers of uh, media, content, objects and so on. And in that direction, it would be a very great marriage. Nobody knows what's going to happen in 10 years, but we can assume that the current instruments of Fab Labs will become commonplace. And the impulse to make things, and to make things digitally, that in this case have physical output, that impulse will stay. So even if the 3D printers and the laser cutters and all the rest of it go away, still the impulse to help people understand how they can make things in this new digital connected world, that will stay.